lesson is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 22. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. You also will do it. Here ends the lesson. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. was recorded in the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning at the 26th verse. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the high, highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for this word. Sanctify it to our minds and our hearts. Open us to all that you have for us. Grant that we would go from simply being those who watch from the outside to those who are active participants in your divine work. Thank you for the work that you are already doing in our hearts and our lives. We celebrate that, Lord. Open our minds and our hearts now to all that you have for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for all your prayers this week. I had a very successful surgery. 
And I, I just uh, need to say I'm so thankful for the prayers and the love and the many <coughs> long wishes that I experience. This truly is a loving, caring congregation. And uh, thank you so much for being here this morning, Brother Garlic, and to the whole band. And um, aren't you having a great time? Pastor Stam and your beautiful family are with us this morning. It's wonderful to have you all here. My brother it, and I go back a little bit. He took me on my first tour of Teal College in Greenville, Pennsylvania. And he was there. I still remember what we even ate in the, in, in the cafeteria. You know, trust me. I remember these things. Food, I mean, obviously. And I, does it show? Food's kind of an important thing. I remember those chicken nuggets, and besides that, I went to that school anyway. <laughs> but he's been with me over the years, and uh, I never would have imagined, even five years ago, moving into this area, that I would be here today and that we would be able to enjoy worship together, our two families, and in this bigger family. And uh, thank you for your care and your commitment to apostles over the years. I want to recognize Bishop Stam, because his role is in truly a, that of a bishop, because he oversees one or two Navy chaplains. Uh, how many are there that you oversee or responsible for? 260. Just 260. <laughs> Being a comfort in time of crisis, ministering alongside, whether in the trenches or, you know, on decks, wherever they happen to be. And I also need to acknowledge not only his, the blessing that he is to those that he serves, but also... I'm sure that there are one or two Navy wives and families. If you're Navy or military wife or family, could you just raise your hand? Yeah, there's one or two here. <laughs> Mary Ellen, you're in good company, and so is your entire family. We acknowledge your ministry because without what you're doing, and you're definitely a part of everything that's going on. So I bless you for that. And uh, we thank you, and we recognize the service to Christ and his kingdom. We have, uh, we've enjoyed a lot of good worship. Are you enjoying it? Yes. I'll tell you what, I am too, and there's more to come. And I don't want to get in the way of that. In fact, you know, when the Lord starts showing up and doing stuff, I've learned that I just I just want to get in tune with whatever it is that he's doing. And if he has a different agenda, my agenda can just kind of take a back seat to the things that he is doing. Because he is the one who has the power to transform hearts. I have to tell you that we come from a tradition that has outstanding theology. And I think we, we all pretty much agree on that. And yet, if our theology becomes even an idol itself, all other things need to stand back and take, go to the, the back of the room so that the things that God wants to do and needs to do in people's lives has full precedence. Amen? Amen. We can have all the best garments, all the best flowing robes and everything, but have absolutely zero anointing of the power of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Which would you rather have? Because I don't need liturgical window dressing. How about you? Yeah, yeah. This guy will attest to you. I, I appreciate good liturgy. I appreciate worship. I appreciate the things that we have from the historical church, but I don't want to miss the, the you know, I don't want to miss the, 
what the things that God has for us, because the things that God has for us can take actually the historical church and make it look like the hysterical church. I want to be about the things that he is doing. When we start talking about that, it's impossible in the birth narratives to go much farther than Mary. Have you seen the Mary that's out there? Have you seen that little crash set, the little nativity scene? Doesn't it look like chocolate? <laughs> I had to tell you, it's not just me that has tried to take a bite. <laughs> out of the donkey's ear. It's not chocolate. But it looks like it. We have a we have plywood cut out activity that my dad gave us many years ago. And we always set it out this time of year. I'm embarrassed to report that the plywood cutout of the Blessed Mother is in need of a good scrubbing, a fresh coat of paint, and perhaps some, maybe some new dowels, and, you know, so that she kind of like shows a little bit better and she sits a bit straighter in my flower bed. You know, sometimes what we do as we approach the story of Mary and even the birth narratives of, of our Lord is we, we have a tendency to clean things up and make them look pretty. Or we sanitize them and move away from the scandal parts. You know, it's almost like what we need is even a G-rated message. But I, I don't just want to talk about G as in safe. I want to talk about G as in for grown-ups. Because there's so much more to this little gal from this obscure village of Nazareth I have a suspicion that there's more to Mary's story than the quiet, demure creature propped pristinely in every nativity that we've known and needed her to be. You see, it was more than just about the small town gossip in Nazareth. This unexpected interruption to Mary's day. I love the, the book by Penny Marshall. It's entitled, My Mother Was Nuts. <laughs> and Penny Marshall says, you know, I can handle all the crises. It's when things are going relatively well that I completely fall apart. Can you identify with that at all? But here is Mary, and she has this divine interruption to her daily life. What was she doing? Was she perhaps in the process of making bread? Was she in the process, perhaps, of going for the water? Was she looking after younger siblings? I don't know. The gospel doesn't tell us. Apparently, Luke doesn't think that's the really important stuff. I have a funny feeling that Luke's whole Important stuff is the announcement of the coming Savior and what it means when the kingdom of God so invades our lives and takes over. And yeah, there's going to be town gossip. Do we know something about that? But it was much more than this speculation of unbridled pre-bridal passion with an ex-boyfriend or something juicy like that. It was more than a flirtatious and curious young lady with an eye who knows. You know, you know about Mary. 
or that someone had taken advantage of her, or some other crazy rumor. You know how things go, but we're, we're not necessarily pulled into that part in the Gospel of Luke. In fact, I have a sense that it was something much bigger. It was how to explain the unexplainable. Maybe you've had God show up in your life and begin to push things around and do things, and you're not, you, you know that there's something going on, but you can't quite figure it out. And maybe you're like me, maybe you're in the process as a disciple of growing and learning and, and just kind of asking questions and not sure. God, I know that you're doing something, but I'm not certain that I understand it all. Are you there? Can you relate? But see, it was how to explain the unexplainable. You see, on the wedding night, according to Jewish marriage customs, a crimson spattered cloth would prove that she was indeed a virgin. It was proof in blood of a promise kept, a covenant fulfilled. But how could God, who values covenants, whose very name and identity is associated with his righteous promises, seemingly defy his very own values, his righteousness? I mean, doesn't he, doesn't he care? Yet here is this heavenly dignitary announcing that the Holy Spirit of God will cause her womb to bring forth a Savior, fully God and fully man. Doesn't God realize her reputation would be trashed? I mean, isn't that what we have experienced in the church even over the years that, well, the only way for folks to come into the, into the kingdom, come into the church, is by maintaining our pure, perfect reputation. As if somehow our reputation plus Jesus dying on the cross could affect any kind of salvation in anybody else. It don't work that way, folks. Can somebody, can I get a witness in the house? <laughs> Have you reached the point where you're just trying, you're tired of trying to be good to let your little light shine because that's what you were told. As opposed to what Mary encountered, which was a living, breathing encounter that just had a way. <laughs> Proving itself in time, regardless of maybe not necessarily what it is. Huh? Her, you see, her integrity, her father's integrity, her father's integrity, that's a big thing. His word of promise, their writ of betrothal. It was the same, folks, it was the same as a marriage certificate that happened at betrothal. Yet here is God seemingly interrupting a wedding night that was planned, probably Mary and Joseph, obviously, it was planned in advance. It's like God is more concerned about his son that is coming and the greatness of his name rather than personal reputation. His rule in the hearts of humanity. The kingdom that he brings is not one of force and violence, but rather the one where he snuggles up and he writes his love letters on our hearts. He doesn't 
doesn't seem to be too concerned about his reputation being soiled. We don't have to go much farther than to look at Jesus. He wasn't necessarily too concerned about his reputation being soiled because he had a righteousness with the power that could simply overpower. Yes, sin is sin is sin. Sin always breaks. It always breaks relationships. But his righteousness endures forever. His righteousness has the power of covering that and he's not concerned about his reputation so that he can accomplish everything he wants to accomplish and whether it's in Mary herself or in us as well it's like he does it for a living <laughs> he does it without any one of our help without getting any of our help he does it in his own in his own ability. What do you do with a God who, who just has this power that can just do whatever he wants? It's like he's a grown-up or something. It's like God is concerned about his son that is coming, the greatness of his name, his rule in the hearts of humanity. He doesn't seem to be too concerned about his reputation being soiled. So what does she do? She makes a way. She gives a place for folks who don't know everything, kind of like us. Don't know everything about what God's doing in their lives. They just simply, like Mary, simply say yes. One of the most, probably the most powerful prayer is simply the power of yes. Saying yes, okay. They don't have it all figured out. And that's okay. So if you're here, you don't have to have it all figured out just to come, just to receive. Just to let him do in you whatever he chooses that he wants to do. And just like Mary, just trust that what he is doing is legitimate. It is the real deal. It cannot be forced. It cannot be faked. It's the real thing. Verse 31, says, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. Do you realize the only question Mary ever asks is when she asks the angel, how can this be? Because I haven't been with a man. I haven't, I don't have a boyfriend. I don't, I, I haven't stepped out on Joseph. I, ha, I haven't, I, I haven't even been with Joseph. How can this be? That's her one and only question. And you know what? That's a fair question. Do you come this morning with your own questions? And yet, in the midst of that and all the explanations, she just simply says yes. There's no arguing back and forth. I almost said something I shouldn't say in a pulpit. I'm, okay, I'll just say it. <laughs> Is my wife sitting over there? 
when I go and I, I share something with her, I can count on I'm going to have a lot of questions to answer. <laughs> Honey, I'm thinking about, really, have you thought about this and this and this <laughs> and this? Guys, just keep your eyes right up here. I don't want to see any of that. Mm -mm. There'll be no taking, you know, your spouse out this morning. But you know what? Isn't it wonderful that she just simply said, okay. And maybe she didn't necessarily feel like, okay. Maybe she didn't necessarily feel that great, but God calls us to a place beyond our feelings, doesn't he? And maybe that peace came as she continued to let the Christ in her grow more and more. And get ready to sing another song. Oh, holy night. Can you just come to your feet? If this message is for you, I want to take a moment just to pray over you and bless you. Lord God, we, we gather together. We don't necessarily know or understand all that you're doing in us, but we can take confidence that it's real. Lord, you're not looking for us to be a copy of somebody else or somebody else's faith. What you're doing in us is so much bigger and so much more real. We don't, we're not a copy. We're not a copy of a copy, kind of like those ditto, ditto sheets that just kind of eventually start sliding off. You've made us real people. And sometimes our real people, part of us, means that we have hurts and brokenness that, Lord, only you can address. Lord, we thank you for the power of your, your healing power. We thank you for the empty tomb, for your words, because I love you, too shall live. I bless your people with confidence, hope, and joy in all that you are doing in their lives. I celebrate it. And you are doing things in their families' lives. And they're doing, you are doing things in their work life as well. And I celebrate that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.